Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we will discuss the importance of the volume mesh and learn about two different fill width methods for generating the volume mesh in ANSYS Fluent Meshing watertight geometry workflow. This lesson is part one of the two part series and will focus on tetrahedral and polyhedral fill width methods. We will dig into the finer details of these methods and understand the user inputs required. Let's get started. Volume mesh generation is the process of discretizing or representing a computational model using a large number of discrete volumes or cells within which the governing equations are solved. Extreme care needs to be taken during this process as the volume mesh has a significant influence not only on the accuracy and convergence of the solution but also on the total simulation time. Therefore, to generate the volume mesh, there is a dedicated task in the ANSYS meshing watertight geometry workflow that is the generate the volume mesh task which can be used to define specific meshing requirements. Let us understand this task using a demo problem. Launch ANSYS Fluent in meshing mode. Go to file, read and select mesh and then pick the provided mesh file. Once Fluent finishes reading the file, you will notice that the watertight geometry workflow has been automatically set up and all the tasks till the add boundary layers task have already been set up. This is because the surface mesh that we just imported into Fluent has originally been created using the watertight workflow and saved after completing the add boundary layers task. Such files when read back into Fluent retain the information regarding their workflow. The model we have here is that of a generic two element rear wing found on a formula series type race car enclosed within a virtual wind tunnel. Except for the inlet and the outlet, all the other sides of the wind tunnel and the wing geometry are considered as walls. The model consists of only the fluid domain with the wing considered as a void. In the generate the volume mesh task, the first option is fill width. This option determines the meshing method to be used for generating the volume mesh in the computational model. There are four different methods available, namely polyhedra, tetrahedral, hex core and polyhex core. Basically, the name of these methods represent the geometry or the shape of the cells to be used while generating the volume mesh. Based on the selection, a list of the basic and advanced inputs is populated below this option. The hex core and poly hex core fill width methods will be discussed in part two of this lesson. Let's look at tetrahedral and polyhedra fill width methods now. When the fill width option is set to tetrahedral, the user is prompted with growth rate and maximum cell length inputs. Let's understand each of them. As the name suggests, the growth rate is simply the length based size ratio of the next cell to the previous cell as viewed away from the boundary or the boundary layer cap towards the interior of the domain. By default, the value is 1.2 and the range is from 1 to 3. Let's understand this with an example. Here, when the growth rate is 1.1, there is a slower increase in the cell size away from the boundary. Whereas for the growth rate of 3, the increase in cell size is substantial. It is advisable to use smaller growth rate values to avoid artificial diffusion and possible divergence of the numerical solution. The next input is the maximum cell length. This value is nothing but the maximum length of the cell in the volume mesh. This value defines the size of the largest cell in the domain. By default, Fluent automatically calculates this value depending on the existing surface mesh of the computational model. 
However, the user can change the value as required. Though a large cell size reduces the overall cell count and with it the computational time, it is critical to ensure that the max cell size used in the domain is adequate to resolve large-scale features of interest in the fluid flow. Let us now look at the tetrahedral volume fill approach in action. Click on Generate the Volume Mesh button. Once the volume mesh has been generated, we can turn on the clipping plane and visualize an X cut of our geometry. Notice that the volume is filled with tetrahedral cells and prism layers are created along the wall surfaces from the triangular surface mesh as can be seen here. This mesh has approximately 2.5 million cells and the minimum orthogonal quality is 0.15. The major advantage of tetrahedral mesh is its flexibility and adaptability with complex geometries. On the downside, for the wall bounded flows, it is difficult to align the mesh in the flow direction which may hamper the accuracy of the solution. It is generally recommended to use prism layers to avoid highly skewed tetrahedral cells at wall boundaries and to reduce the overall high cell count. In the polyhedral volume fill approach, multiple tetrahedral cells are combined to form one polyhedral cell which reduces the overall cell count. This mesh is widely used because of the advantages over the other type of meshes. So let's discuss the polyhedral fill width method in detail. When the fill width option is set to polyhedra, which is the default option, the user is prompted with the same basic user inputs as in the case of the tetrahedral fill width method. With the default settings and the same surface mesh, Let's generate the volume mesh for our demo problem. Once the volume mesh has been generated, we can turn on the clipping plane and visualize an X cut of our geometry. In addition to the volume being filled with polyhedral cells, notice that the triangular surface mesh has been modified to create a polyhedral surface mesh from which prism layers are grown into the computational domain. Each polyhedral cell is bounded by many faces, more than seven, and is therefore surrounded by many adjacent neighboring cells, hence resulting in better approximation of the gradients and lower numerical diffusion effects. However, more neighbors means more memory storage and hence a slightly higher computational cost, which is generally offset by the overall decreased cell count. The mesh has 0.56 million cells, which is about one-fifth of the tetrahedral mesh, which is the major advantage of this method. Note that this reduction in cell count is a result of combining multiple tetrahedral cells to form fewer polyhedral cells. Care needs to be taken to ensure that the final mesh is sufficient to capture all the required fluid flow behavior. The minimum orthogonal quality of the mesh is 0.21, which is also better than the tetrahedral mesh. Let's summarize what we learned in this lesson. We discussed the importance of the volume mesh generation in CFD simulations and how to use the generate the volume mesh task in the ANSYS Fluent Meshing watertight geometry workflow. We specifically understood the details of the tetrahedral and polyhedral volume meshing methods along with their advantages and disadvantages. With that, let's end this video.